It's not an ideology or following a set of rules. It's a relationship. And no relationship is fostered and thrives unless we spend time together. Hi, this is John Stemkowski, and it's so good to be back with you today for the next in our series of Encouraging Words. You know, these are interesting days. We've been saying that for quite some time, but one of the things that we can see as advantageous is some of us, or many of us, have discretionary time. Discretionary time. We use our time a little bit differently than we would in what we'd call normal times. And one of the things I've been doing and perhaps you have been too, I've been examining my relationship with Jesus. And I think it's a really good exercise to live an examined life, to take stock, to take a look and say, wow, in my case, I, I've been a committed Christian for over 50 years now and involved in ministry for more than 40. But that doesn't mean that everything is always exactly as it should be. And so I've been in this process of examination and saying, what does my relationship with Jesus really look like? And boiling it down and allowing the Holy Spirit to be able to speak to me concerning that. When I was thinking about myself and my own walk with God, I started thinking about you. And I thought, I wonder if others are doing this, likely uh, many are, but I want to take today's episode of Encouraging Words and examine some foundational scriptures that talk about our relationship with Jesus, not just knowing him. Many people, I would say, would say of themselves, I believe in God. I believe in God. They might even say, I'm a Christian. But there's an interesting scripture in the New Testament that says that you say you believe in God, even the demons believe in God and tremble. So it's not about whether we just believe in God. It's about the relationship we have that he offers us through his son, Jesus Christ. So today, we're going to look into the word of God at some scriptures from the New Testament that are really foundational about what it means to know Jesus, to love Jesus, to have a living, vital, transforming, life-changing relationship with him. Let's see what the Word of God has to say to us today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved, and he proved it, dear friends, by giving, giving first his only begotten son, not only as a babe in a manger, but a savior who went to the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We love him because he first loved us. This continues the idea that God is proactive in his love. He was the first one to reach out to us. Ours is a response. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. In this scripture, it points to an exchange of what we consider to be ours, that being our lives, but Jesus is calling us to exchange that which we cannot keep for that which we cannot lose and to inherit a new identity in him. I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. You know, from the initial point when we come to faith in Christ and we accept his offer of love and forgiveness, our lives at that point are no longer our own. We're no longer the captain of our fate. The rest of life is all about stewardship. We no longer belong to ourselves. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Dear friends, when we're in Christ and we accept him as Savior and Lord and commit our lives to him, from that moment on, we are, in the depth of our spirit, new creatures. Those scriptures all lay the foundation of what it is to really have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The truth is, the Bible says to each one of us is given a measure of faith. And you might say, well, I'm not sure how much faith I have. Jesus sort of solved that for us by saying that if you have faith even the size of a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds, and yet it grows into quite a large tree in which the birds roost and make their nests, even that little bit of faith, whatever faith we have, which is given to us by God, in fact, everything is given to us by God, but he gives us even the faith to believe in him. But once we do that, these scriptures illuminate kind of what that relationship is like and what it's about. In each one of these videos, we select a song for you. And today, we've selected a song that is quite an old song. It was written in the 1800s, and we recorded it several years ago, and it's called I Surrender All. And rather than unpacking uh, dozens, it could be dozens of scriptures for you, I want to unpack the lyrics of this song, which are very clear in their application as to what our relationship, our daily relationship with Jesus could and should be like. It's a beautiful song. We'll play it for you in a little bit, but I want to unpack these lyrics for you verse by verse and emphasize certain words that I hope will paint a picture for you of what it means to have a life-changing, transforming relationship with Jesus in your heart. The first verse of this very powerful and intimate song says, All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. And I want to emphasize certain words out of that. The word all. All is all. All is everything. All means everything about my life. All the things I care about, my thoughts, my words, my attitudes, I surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. All to Jesus, I surrender. What does surrender really mean? You know, for some people, it Sounds like the word we'd use at the end of a skirmish or a battle that the enemy surrenders. In this case, it's a little different. You might replace it with the word yield. I surrender control of my life to the control of the Holy Spirit. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. The wooing to us by the Holy Spirit is to love God, to really love him. And we love him because he first loved us. It's a, it's a response, a natural response. And I will trust him as well because he's proven himself to be trustworthy. In his presence, daily live. I would submit to you that for a Christian on a good track would have a a clear understanding of a daily relationship, even a moment-by-moment -moment relationship, where Jesus is in our conscious thoughts and in our heart. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. This relationship with Christ, which is transforming and life-changing for both time and for eternity, is intimate. It is a relationship. It's not a concept. It's not an ideology. It's not a religious system or, or following a set of rules. It's a relationship. And no relationship is fostered and thrives unless we spend time together, unless we pour out our hearts to him and let him pour out his heart to us. The second verse says, All to Jesus I surrender. Make me Savior holy thine. And I want to emphasize what that means. Because when we allow entrance of the Holy Spirit into our lives, he begins a change from the inside out. Do you know that nothing about us can be legislated from the outside? We really can't legislate our thoughts, our words, and our behavior. 
Only an inner working of the Holy Spirit can do that, and that takes time. So in this verse, in these lyrics, it says, make me, Savior, holy thine. That's a process, and I want to encourage you. Nobody gets there instantly or even quickly. It's a lifetime process where we surrender our thoughts, our words, the attitudes of our hearts, and everything about which we care to the menstruations and change. The action of change takes place by the Holy Spirit within us, and it takes time. We will be, if we allow him to, we will be changed daily, incrementally by the Holy Spirit for the rest of our lives until we draw our very last breath. The second part of that verse says, let me feel thy Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. The Bible says that we are earthen vessels and we have precious treasure inside. That precious treasure inside is the personage of the Holy Spirit. So in this request, it says, let me feel thy Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of people say we we're not to be too emotional in the things of God, but I'd like to know one relationship you have that has love in it, real love in it, whether it's a spouse, a grandchild, a child, a friend that you dearly love that doesn't have emotion in it. Of course it does. God gave us those feelings. And here we're saying, let me feel the presence of your spirit and truly know that thou art mine, that I have you in my heart. And the third verse says, all to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to thee. Again, it's an affirmation of a choice that says, I commit, I dedicate, I give everything I am, all that I am, all that I ever hope to be. I have a loose hold on my possessions. I have a loose hold on my decisions. I yield them to you. I give them to you. Fill me with thy love and thy power. Let your blessings fall on me. The interesting thing about this surrendered relationship with God is that it's very two-way. We do certain things, we make commitments, and he has commitments to us. I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. You're my sheep, you'll know my voice. This is the way, walk ye in it. It's replete. And we can never, ever outgive God. But we start by saying, I give myself to thee. Fill me with your love and your power. My dear friend, I'm going to tell you something. We need the love of Christ in these days. It is impossible for us to love anybody unless we're loving out of the reservoir of the love that Jesus places inside of our hearts an attitude of gratitude for everything he's done, and a surrendered life, fill me with your love and your power. And I also want to tell you that you are not without power. You're not without resource. You're not being knocked around, but you're standing steady in the love and the power that Jesus gives us on a regular basis every single day. Let your blessings fall on me, and they will and they do. We're going to listen to that song now. It was recorded by the celebrant several years ago, and it is a song whereby thousands, tens of thousands of people have made a commitment that I'm going to ask you to examine in your life today and to make. I believe in these days, if we are not solely rooted, strongly rooted in uh, Jesus, that we have the capacity to be shaken and to be moved. And these are not times to say, I believe in God. It's to say, I am surrendered to God. He's my all in all. He's my everything. I've given my life to him. As this song plays, I'm going to ask you to watch the video, watch the lyrics go by, and make this your prayer with me. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him. I freely give. to him I free 
I sincerely hope that during the course of that song, it was a holy moment for you where you said, I surrender to you, Lord Jesus. Let me quickly say why we do that. God first loved us. Jesus cooperated with the heart of the Father, came to this earth, and he knew that we were powerless over sin and death, so he took it upon himself to the cross was crucified, died, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. Now, these things are true, and it's the basis of our salvation. But I sincerely hope that through the course of that song, you prayed and you said, Lord, I really want a life-changing, transforming from the inside-out relationship with you. My dear friend, I, I truly hope that you did that, and I'm thrilled for you because your new life begins, but now it's a matter of stewardship and walking with him daily. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you so much for the truth of your gospel. It's liberating. The birth, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, and the words you speak to us today, calling us to surrender, calling us that uh, to give our lives to you fully, and saying that in you we're new creatures, calling us to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow you, calling us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto you. Thank you for your goodness and your love. I pray, Father, that every day we'll know more about what it means to be your son and your daughter. And now, dear friend, I pray for you. I pray that the commitment that you have made to follow Jesus, to be close to him, to make him first in your life, and to put him preeminent above all other things will be a solid decision. And may the Holy Spirit hold you close to his heart. Even when difficult times come, never forget your first love. Love him because he first loved us. Bless our friend and hold him steady and strong during these challenging days. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. We pray these things with gratitude in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for being with us today. We enjoyed, as always, being with you, and I hope that today was a, a poignant day for you, an important day, a deeply spiritual day where decisions were made inside of your heart. And let me say that if, in fact, you decided today to go to a deeper place in your relationship with Christ, to surrender your life to him, we'd like to know about that. Let us hear from you. Send us an email or make a comment at the bottom of the video or drop us a line in the mail or even a phone call. And if these videos are helpful to you, consider sharing them with your family and friends as well. And as always, should you need prayer for anything, anything at all, let us know. We'd be happy to pray for you. God bless you today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Encouraging Words.